greater occipital nerve is the medial branch of the second cervical dorsal ramus, but it may also receive some fibers from the third cervical nerve. It courses between the inferior capitis oblique and semispinalis capitis muscles, entering the scalp between the semispinalis capitis and trapezius muscles. The greater occipital nerve provides sensation to the medial portion of the posterior scalp with radiation ventrally up to the vertex. The occipital artery usually lies just lateral to the greater occipital nerve, and it is the most useful landmark for locating the nerve. The greater occipital nerve is the most common nerve targeted for block, either alone or in combination with other peripheral nerves, such as the lesser occipital nerve and branches of the trigeminal nerves, supraorbital, suprotrochlear, and auriculotemporal nerves. Since the tenderness is due to the central sensitization in chronic forms of headaches, tenderness is the pericranial nerves should be examined in every patient by palpation. As tenderness over the greater occipital nerve is a good predictive factor of outcome, clinicians should palpate the greater occipital nerve to improve patient selection before deciding the use of greater occipital nerve block and providing patients with more detailed information about the potential response to this procedure. Cluster headache and migraine were the most frequent headache types for the indications of occipital nerve block. Following the two randomized control trials demonstrating the efficacy of gone block in cluster headache, this form of treatment, including steroid, was accepted as the only class A evidence treatment in cluster headache. Given that approved medications in chronic migraine are effective only after a leg period, greater occipital nerve blocks may be an alternative treatment option, serving as transitional therapy with rapid efficacy. Gone blocks are inexpensive, relatively easy to administer, and have been used for decades in various types of headache disorders. Gone block with dexamethasone may also play a role in the management of patients presented with postural puncture headache that doesn't respond to conservative management. There are two ways to find the greater occipital nerve. Proximal approach is to 3 cm below and 1.5 cm lateral to the occipitalis protuberantia. And the second way is a distal approach. Gone is localized one third medially of the way between the occipital protuberantia and the mastoid process. Occipital artery localized lateral to the greater occipital nerve. So before the procedure, the best way is to show patients the illustration of peripheral cranial nerves to be injected. The patient should be informed about the procedure details, side effects, and informed consent should be obtained. If the patient is using antithrombotic, it should be stopped at least five to seven days prior. Patients should also be advised to eat before the procedure to reduce a syncopal episode. Patients are asked to lay in a spin position or to sit on a chair, but we generally ask them to lie on a spin position. So we use one milliliter of 2% lidocaine and 1 milliliter of 0.5% bubivacaine with together 80 milligram methylprednisolone. And we use a 27 gauge 1 inch needle. First, we measure the exact area we will do the injection. We can use either proximal or distal approach. Generally, we use proximal approach. And proximal approach is, as I said, 3 cm below and 1.5 cm lateral to the occipitalis protuberantia. Gently insert the new needle to the skin until needle tip is at the periostome. Then slightly withdraw the needle to verify intravascular area and inject the solution. The patient may feel a burning sensation as the anesthetic is infiltrated. The second option is a distal approach, which greater occipital nerve is localized one-third medially 
of the way between the occipitalis protuberantia and the mastoid process. And as I said, occipital artery localized lateral to the greater occipital nerve. For patients who require repeated injections, the recommended frequency of treatments is once every two to four weeks without steroids. Complications of the nerve block include infection, hematoma, vertigo, nausea, and hypersensitivity. There may be numbness after the procedure, which also injected is a sign that the procedure has infiltrated to the targeted nerve. And uncommon but important adverse effects include transient dizziness, lightheadedness, transient headache exacerbations, and alopecia, due to corticosteroids. So we have to follow the patients for 30 minutes about for any side effects and follow the blood pressure before and after the procedure. For patients who require repeated injections, the recommended frequency of treatments is once every two to four weeks without steroids.